Hello, my name is Tasso Comanescu, and welcome to EliteGuitarist.com. Today, I will be teaching Bach's Gavotte in Rondo, which is a mini masterpiece from his fourth lute suite, BWV 1006A. You might also know this from his third violin partita, also in the key of E major. This is a wonderful 2018 Vladimir Druzinin guitar, courtesy of our friends over at Guitar Salon International. It's made of spruce and African rosewood. So thank you GSI for letting us use this wonderful guitar for this tutorial today. I'm primarily going off the Andre Segovia transcription of this piece. I had the wonderful opportunity to study it with both Christopher Parkening and Scott Tennant, and I also recorded it for a record I did called Renaissance Baroque a few years ago. I've since changed my interpretation a little bit, so I'll be talking about that. Some of the insights I've picked up from those two legends I studied it with, and also some of the ideas that you can try. Uh, to be fair, I take some liberties that might irritate some purists and scholars out there, but to be fair, you have to do what you find to be the most interesting to you and how you want to play the piece so that you enjoy it. Because if you enjoy it, your audiences enjoy it, so on and so forth. So I'll be giving you some options as we go through this. It's a rondo, meaning there's a theme, and it recurs throughout the piece. And there are four episodes or couplets, as you would call them, and they move from the key of E major to different keys and really shows off box genius as well as uh, technically demanding aspects of our repertoire. So here we go. The opening theme measures one through eight occurs, as I mentioned, several times throughout the piece. And I'll teach you the standard way of playing it here in the beginning. And as we go through the piece, I'll share some ideas I have to make it more interesting every time the listener hears it and also for your own enjoyment. I would just say right from the get-go that if you're going off this transcription, the Segovia one, the iconic one, the first one, you want to practice your slurs, whether it's hammer-ons and pull-offs. So I would just like to start with that. Everything is simple as one to two, I'm here in the fifth position, one to three, and one to four, and then the pull-offs for each of those. And then you can do that with each finger. You want to spend some time doing that and you also want to do it with a bar because so many times throughout the piece you have to have a bar and do a hammer on like this and a pull off as well with the bar including in the very first two measures okay so we're starting now in measure one we're in the key of e major okay the beginning of measure one you want to play an e at the second fret with your first finger and an open b here together and you hold that down, and on beat two, you're going to play a G sharp. Acts as a pickup into the next measure. So this is actually the pickup measure, and measure one, you're gonna get this ornamented theme, okay? So this is the pickup bar. You wanna leave your third finger down, go to a half bar here with your left hand, and then Using this third finger as an anchor on the G sharp, you're gonna ornament the G sharp with the A right above the neighbor tone with your pinky. See, I just missed it there. So you wanna keep practicing that. This is literally one of the hardest parts of the piece, especially if you're nervous, you're coming out, you're gonna play it right from the get-go, and you gotta put your fourth finger, your little finger to work. So you have to practice this, and I suggest simply doing a pull off and then a hammer on by itself and then adding a half bar doing the same thing just sitting there and practicing that and then doing them together starting your practice for this piece maybe do this for two to three minutes okay so this takes us through into measure one and then i play an f sharp as a part of the bar there then an open E, and then back to the F sharp on beat three, followed by this F sharp minor chord, which is an F sharp at the fourth fret of the D string. You have that A and C sharp as a part of your bar on the second fret, and then an A with your fourth finger on beat four of measure one.
okay? And now at the start of measure two, we have this chord, which is a half bar. You move it over from the second fret to the fourth fret. And you have a B and a D sharp, a part of that bar, with an A on the fifth fret of the high E string with your second finger. And I like to always do vibrato on this chord. Every time I have this chord in the piece, it's really nice to do some vibrato. And that's the first phrase of the piece, okay? Uh, starting in the second half of bar two, we have this eighth note figure. I leave my thumb planted on the fifth string because you want to have that ready to go for what's coming in bar three. And it's a pull off from the B to the G sharp. So your fourth finger to your first finger, that's the seventh fret to the first fret. I use my middle finger on my right hand. And then an A at the fifth fret with my second finger and my A finger on my right hand. And then an F sharp on the seventh fret of the B string right there with my middle finger on my right hand. So this is bar two, plant your thumb, because then you're gonna need the bass D sharp there on the same string, ready to go, okay? Now this next bar, bar three, there are lots of different ways to play this. Two primarily. If you want to do a cross string ornament, you can hold the bass note, which I ended up doing. But I also studied it and performed it a few times doing the ornament like Segovia on the same string in the seventh position. So I'll show you how to do that first and the way that I like to do it. And it's up to you what your guitar sounds like, what's comfortable for you technically, because this happens so many times in the piece that you want to be able to execute it with uh, accuracy uh, every time. So uh, you have a open B and a D sharp here at the sixth fret of the fifth string. And then you're gonna shift positions to the seventh fret of the B string and do a quick 16th note ornament. F sharp, G sharp, A. And you can use your AMI fingers on your right hand. And then a hinge bar here to play the final F sharp. And then you go into bar seven here, E, which is a part of the bar in the G sharp of the ninth fret, followed by an E at the ninth fret of the G string. And then your other bass note, your B here, is a part of the bar at the seventh fret with an F sharp on top, followed by a D sharp on the and of four. So very slowly, this is the way Segovia does it. Okay, now the way that I like to do it, not saying it's better, just the way that I like to do it, So the advantage is there that you can hold the bass note. And I can just do this faster. Uh, Scott Tennant showed me this. It was really cool for him to do. Uh, so you have that D sharp there with your third finger still, but now the B is a part of a bar at the fourth fret, okay? And now you have a cross string ornament, F sharp at the seventh fret of the B string, followed by G sharp, which is a part of the bar, on the fourth fret of the first string and then an A with your second finger at the fifth fret. Okay? Then slide your third finger over, grab that E in the bass there on beat three, and the G sharp is still a part of the bar on the first string. So E and G sharp here, followed by the E at the fifth fret of the second string. You take this bar and you move it down two frets to the B and the F sharp, which it's played on beat four, and then the D sharp at the fourth fret of the B string. And then you have open E's at the start of bar four, okay? So this is the second half of bar two and bar three. And that ornament is M-A-I. Then you have a simple E major arpeggio that you're outlining the chord here in bar four. Okay, so that's E, open B, G sharp at the first fret, E at the second fret of the D string. Leave those down, G sharp, open B, open E, and then G sharp at the fourth fret of the high E string. So this is bar four. Now here's a trick. You leave that down for the start of bar five and then add a half bar at the second fret to play the A and C sharp. Okay, 
and then you have a pull off. A and C sharp together, G sharp pulls off to F sharp, and then an open E. And then you put the half bar right back down halfway through bar five and play this F sharp minor chord. F sharp at the fourth fret, and the rest of the notes are part of your bar two. And here we go with the hammer ons. You have to leave everything down and hammer on with your fourth finger. So you want to practice these always by themselves. And then kick that fourth finger up one fret to the A, and then go back to the F sharp, which is a part of the bar. So this is bar five. And back to that chord that I like to do vibrato on at the start of bar six, which is the same chord at the start of bar two. This is the B, D sharp, and A. Okay, so this is bar four and five. You might notice, I'll do this one more time, watch my thumb, I mute the low E so that it doesn't ring into bar five. So here, I'll accent it, this is the low E right here. Mute it right there, at the back of your thumb. When you record yourself, you hear that immediately, so that's how I kind of came up with that. And now we have the final cadence at the end of the theme, which is the same as the opening, the pickup, the E and the B together, followed by the G sharp. And then in bar seven, we have a half bar with an open A. A and C sharp is a part of the bar. F sharp, B7 chord here, five, six bar at the second fret. B and an F sharp at the fourth fret of the D string, followed by an A and a D sharp. A is a part of the bar and D sharp is the fourth fret of the B string. I like to play my thumb through those bass strings. And then an E triad, two E octaves. Uh, two E's, I should say, uh, two octaves apart, which are the open strings, followed by the G sharp together to make it an E major chord. So that final cadence, just relax on that last chord, strong here, and then we're done. And on the repeat, I like to play it a little quieter and also roll that first ornament. And you can crescendo here, and then do your cadence. Every time we come back to this theme, I'll show you a slightly different way to play it. So that's the first most important part of this piece is the theme.